uh, look at some of the components of it uh, and, and its impact upon men, women, and children. I think that uh, if we do that, it'll give you an opportunity to give us as much information as you care to give in reference to heterosexuals and homosexuals uh, dealing with the men and then the women, the impact that it has had upon women and children, AIDS, babies, and et cetera. That's the kind of information that we're looking for. And why don't you start off by talking about the men and follow that by women and children okay. with this disease. Now, when we talk about AIDS in general, we, we, we can actually say that it's a men's disease. 90% of all the cases in the United States, and that is about over 190,000 cases, the majority, 90% 90, 90 have been males. In other words, for every 100, only 90 will be males and only 10 will be females. And when we say it's a male disease, it's actually true when it comes to whites primarily. Among whites, white males, we can even say that it's only 95% 95, 95 of those who are infected are males. Only 5% are females. So it is true that among white males, the disease is predominantly a male disease. And we are seeing that because the mode of transmission of the virus among whites have been primarily men having sex with men. So the, the, the virus has stayed among men primarily. When it comes to blacks, though, I mean, other, other minority races, the male issue doesn't hold. For example, in, among African Americans or blacks, the, the AIDS is affecting about 20% of the black females. So in other words, for every 100 people, Every hundred people from affected, 80, 80 of them are males and 20, 20 of them are females. And because of that fact, of course, you can know the implication for children. But among blacks or minorities, you can see it's a male disease. And we are seeing that because of the mode of transmission among the minorities. Among black, for example, um, there are some... Uh, black males, about 44% of them, who have been sleeping with men. And they got the infection, HIV, through having had sex with other men. These men also, we believe that some of them are also having sex with women at the same time. So some of them carry the disease from the men that they, who infected them to their women. We also believe that about 39% of the black males are also drug users. In fact, half of the females, them, of females, black females who were infected um, were also drug users. So through drug use too, the males are infecting the women uh, and the females are also infecting the men. So um, when we're talking about minorities or blacks, we, can say, we cannot say AIDS is a male disease. We believe that actually it is getting to, be, to become a family disease. Well, let's look at children. Uh, what, what, are the, what are the impacts on the children? And I say that primarily because uh, a recent study indicated that uh, this disease has had a greater impact upon uh, poor teens and upon uh, other uh, young people. And of course, I, I'm making reference to a job course study, I think, that was done quite recently. Uh, what about children and the so-called AIDS babies that fall within that category? Okay, you have two questions. You asked two questions. You asked about teenagers and about babies. Let me start with the babies first. Now, the babies, primary, the, the babies are getting infected by one primary means, especially among the black community. Main, over 90% over of all the children who were infected were born to mothers who were themselves infected. In other words, the mothers were infected either through having themselves used drugs or they got infected because they had sex with a black female who was infected. So the children were born infected. Now the good thing is that it's not all these children who are, who are born who will go on to develop AIDS. That's the good thing about it. Well, we've already demonstrated that. that yes. Uh, there are some, about 40% of those who are born to mothers who are infected will go on to develop AIDS. What is the good thing about that? So the more the females are infected, the more the likelihood that the children will be infected. And as we are seeing it now, 
black females are getting more and more infected. In fact, over 50% of all females in the U.S. infected are blacks. So naturally, the, the, the children who are infected are also um, blacks. Uh, I would say minorities because Hispanics are also infected. Now, when we are talking about teenagers, teenagers, when we talk about ch children, pediatrics, we talk about those from ages 0 to 12. Now, when we are, when we are talking about teenagers, from the CDC viewpoint, we are talking about, about persons from 13 to 19. Now, even though this age group comprised only 1%, of the total AIDS cases in the United States, almost everybody we would talk to would agree that they are the, the new group of people who are going to get the AIDS virus. Now, it's, in other words, it's going to have an impact upon them greater than... There is no question about that. And we believe that the 1% the that we see among them is purely it's, it's underestimation, purely on, based upon the fact that HIV has got what we call a, a very, very long latency period. When you get infected, the median time of seeing, seeing a symptom may be 10 years. So when a teenager is infected at age 13, the first time he might see a sign may be in his 20s, 20s. So they are rolling, they are being counted in the 20s. And don't forget that we don't count you when you are only infected with HIV. We only count you when we have reached the last stage, what we call AIDS, and we only say we've got AIDS when we are seeing some signs, diseases in you, which normally wouldn't have, wouldn't have shown up in you, were it not that you, you have the HIV. So by, by the time we count teenagers, they are in their early 20s, so they are not counted. So you'll find that in terms of counting them within ages 13 and 19, they are only small. But there is no question that they are it, because their behaviors support that. They are engaging in behaviors that go on to transmit the virus, primarily sex. Well, uh, Doctor, you know, uh, I think one of the most important things that we've dealt with uh, in our uh, newspapers over the last couple of uh, days has been sex education, uh, education uh, in, in the high schools and elementary schools. Now, within that framework, are you saying that, uh, that we ought to uh, try to get as much information across to these young people as we possibly can. Uh, uh, why is it, uh, are they not listening to uh, what we're saying? I mean, what, what do you see as the problem? There are two, there are two problems for, for me. The problems are with adults. That's how I see it. For the fall, teenagers are seeing things. Do what I say, don't do what I do. Um, even though sex is, to me, it's in the, it's, it's, it's in the life, you know, it's almost everywhere, in the TV, everywhere, and they are seeing it, they are feeling it, they are, it's everywhere. We are saying, don't do that. That is inconsistent. Secondly, we, from what we are, we are seeing that they are getting pregnant, they are getting STDs sexually, some diseases every time, and we still are, are making us, we are believing that they are not doing anything. So the schools are not doing well in terms of making them be aware of the dangers out there, whether we like it or not. Or in fact, if we want to save our children, then we have no choice than to talk about these things, talk to them about the dangers of STDs. The children do not um, know how vulnerable they are. They don't even believe it. ACEs, and in, in Nigeria, for example, ACEs somewhere. Most of them haven't seen ACE cases. So they always think ACEs is somewhere. They don't know that it's within them. There are a lot of persons who are walking around with the virus, including most teenagers. But we adults are not, are not um, um, compromising and saying, hey, we need to let them know that um, this is dangerous out there. In this respect, most of the... Uh